Welcome to Digital Badges Exposed, technology behind a library badges program. I'm Lindsay O'Neill. I'm the Instructional Design Librarian as well as part-time faculty in our Instructional Design and Technology graduate program at California State University Fullerton in Southern California. Slides for this presentation are available online at jlindsayoneill.com slash digital badges. This presentation was originally given at ACRL 2017, but for this venue, this is a three-part recording. The first one that you're watching right now is the introduction plus a little bit about my Spark Tutorials project, which is my tutorial and digital badge program here at Cal State Fullerton. Part two will be about digital badge technology, how it all works and what options you have. And the third part will be about learning object design, which is about designing effective tutorials. Overall, I wanted to emphasize that there's one golden rule. When you decide that you want to do badges, think first about your badge design. Think about what the badge proves and who will care. Will the learner care when they earn the badge? Does it prove that they actually did something meaningful? If they want to show off the badge to somebody else, will somebody else care about it? Just things to consider as you design your program. Because effective and meaningful badges should recognize an accomplishment. The learner should have to do something to earn that badge. Ineffective and meaningless badges reward learners just for showing up. For example, lynda.com now issues digital badges for watching their videos. Learners don't actually have to do anything to earn them, they just show up, hit play, and may or may not even sit through the video. So if you post a lynda.com uh, badge to your LinkedIn profile, is anyone going to be impressed by that? Probably not. Now I'm going to give you a quick overview of my Spark Tutorials program here at Cal State Fullerton at Pollock library. So we have a Spark Tutorials program that issues digital badges to learners for completion that lives in our learning management system. Right now we have a total of four tutorials. They each take about 10 to 15 minutes to complete, but together they comprise a Pollock library module. So this is actually the first module of four planned modules in the Spark Tutorials suite. Together, these tutorials give a complete overview to what Pollock Library has to offer and the very basics of doing library research. More than 500 students have actually completed this module since they were launched in August 2016. And learners earn a badge for completing each tutorial at 100%, and they get that meta badge, that Pollock Library badge, when they complete all four. Again, this program lives in our learning management system. It works really well because it's centralized, librarians can track learners, faculty can, can check student completion, and students are fairly motivated by the fast pace and by earning badges. This is a seamless experience for our students since they're already in our learning management system. As I just mentioned, this is the first module for planned modules. The last three are evaluation, searching, and citations. And we actually wrote out an entire suite of learning objectives based on the ACRL framework for information literacy for higher education. So all of this will be aligned. Um, it's supposed to lay the groundwork anyways for pointing students in the direction of mastering the, frame, the framework. A little bit of a close-up of the Pollock Library module. We talk about what services and collections we have, again, how to find books, how to find articles, how to get help. And uh, this is all supposed to be scaffolded as well. So it's all written at a lower level, but it's all scaffolded so it points students up to higher level things. Just to get this out of the way, I get asked a lot what I use to develop my program. So for the learning objects or tutorials, I used the authoring software Articulate Storyline 2. It's fairly popular in libraries. It has a low learning curve and produces pretty slick looking tutorials. And these tutorials are packaged as SCORM, which means they talk to our learning management system. More on that in just a minute. Our learning management system is Moodle. We did have to get the badges module added on to Moodle. I lobbied IT for about a year to do that. And finally they did. And there's still a few technical problems in the back end, but the system works. So what am I going to do? 
Uh, let's see. So the spark tutorials are set up as a single course, kind of like Biology 101 has its own course, or a section of Biology 101 has its own course. This is the spark tutorials course in Moodle. And each tutorial is a SCORM package embedded into the course, so it talks to the gradebook. And the digital badges are set up to issue for 100% score on the tutorials, again, with a meta badge for completing all four. A little more about SCORM. SCORM is just a set of technical standards that makes everything play nice. So when you package a tutorial as SCORM and you embed it as a SCORM package into a course, it'll talk to that course basically. So any score that a student gets on a quiz in a SCORM package tutorial will be communicated to the learning management system gradebook. So our system works because the tutorials are self-contained, but anything students do in the tutorials is communicated to the learning management system, and the learning management system handles the badge issuance. This is the student view of our course. Students can access the course just by being given a permalink and then they self-enroll. So Moodle does allow permalinks, so faculty can just pass out that permalink and give it to the faculty. So sometimes faculty want to embed the tutorials into their own courses. Some learning management systems do this really easily. Moodle does not. This just doesn't work in this situation. So I do have to have faculty send their students over to our course to complete things. And then faculty want to see if students have completed the tutorials. They have to check each student's profile for their earned badges. I'll show you that in just a second. But the system works really great for us because again, it's seamless for the students. They're already in the system and we get to track everybody as a library. So we're tracking library instruction, which is really great. Slightly different view of the same page. So you can see those tutorials. Each one has a little, little package icon. That just means it's a SCORM package. And it's also set so those little check boxes on the right will automatically check once the student gets 100% on each tutorial. So they can see right from the start what they have completed and what they haven't completed. So pretty slick. And this is my view of the badges. So we've issued over 500 meta badges for completing the Pollock Library module. It's way more than that now. We did partner at first with the first year experience program where they integrated these tutorials into their curriculum and all students are required to take it. So that was a, a big source of students. But there's also been sort of a word of mouth thing. Uh, we did design these for freshmen, but we have all sorts of transfer students, graduate students completing them. Faculty require their students to complete and send them over. And because the course is self-enrollable, I don't actually know where all the students are coming from, so it's kind of an interesting thing that I need to do a little bit more research on. But I've gotten very good feedback. I've got a feedback form set up in the course as well, and I have get good feedback now and then from students and from faculty. And then this is what the badges actually look like. They do show up in the learning management system profile for students. So to see what a student has earned, you have to click into their profile. Their peers can see them. Their faculty can see them. And that's where they, they live. And if you click on each one, it does click through to tell you what the student had to do to earn that badge. So this is the end of part one of Digital Badges Exposed. Please go ahead and check out part two on the badge technology to continue on.